right, I'm going to talk about um, how you work with large files in the Mark Editor. Uh, I hear every now and again um, folks who uh, have trouble working with uh, large data files um, or will ask if there's data file limits um, in the uh, editor, uh, specifically folks who may not have um, programming expertise who uh, develop their own scripts to stream large data files and so are interested in using Mark Edit. Um, I guess I, uh, and, and what am I talking about for large data files? So anything under 100 megabytes I would consider not a large data file. Um, uh, although I have heard folks who have uh, mentioned that, that working with file sets in, in various sizes um, can cause them issues. Uh, generally, these problems uh, get traced back to um, settings that are made. So MarkEdit, uh, specifically MarkEdit 7, um, but MarkEdit 6 as well, has a number of options that are set aside um, to try and help facilitate working with large files uh, and to help um, ease some of the pain points that happen when working with large data files, particularly because of the way how because of how the data has to be loaded, um, in order to provide some of the uh, functionality that the application does. Uh, so I'm going to go through uh, talking a little bit about um, how uh, Mark Edit, uh, Mark Editor specifically, uh, works with large data files, um, options that are available um, to facilitate that process, um, and where. Um, Mark Edit 7 uh, differs from 6. All right, so things I hear. So I hear sometimes folks tell me that saving data in the Mark Editor can be slow um, when working with larger files. Uh, this primarily is related to Mark Edit 6. And that is a true statement. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. The tasks can sometimes take a long time to run. Again, Mark Edit 6. And again, a true statement. I'll talk a little bit about that. And that the Mark Editor has trouble working with very large files. Um, and that's uh, across the board in terms of the work. And so um, uh, I want to talk about some of the reasons why folks may um, run across uh, uh, issues working within the Mark Editor and talk about um, mitigations that are there to uh, facilitate allowing users to work with very, very big files. Um, I'll tell you up front that uh, while I tend to, when I have to deal with very, very large files, um, either write scripts that are in a variety of languages, depending on if it's uh, how much time I have to do it, how much time um, I want to spend on it. Um, I have worked with Mark Edit um, and data in the Mark Editor when I have specific tasks that I can just leave running um, on file sets that are uh, up to uh, 10 million records. So uh, in terms of the actual size of the data, um, size really isn't a problem. Um, and in fact, uh, really the limiting factor um, within the application um, is memory that's available to you both on the hard drive and um, your uh, RAM space because that's going to determine on Windows whether you're working in virtual or um, uh, whether you're working in virtual memory or whether you're working in swap space um, as well as um, the settings that you use which will also impact uh, how the application works with the memory available on your computer. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. All right, so the first one, so saving data in the Mark Editor can be slow. This is uh, absolutely true in Mark Edit 6. Um, one of the things that I heard from folks and definitely seen myself is that when making edits, after edits were made, um, saving uh, a file using uh, save as or save could sometimes take 10 to 15 seconds, depending on the size of the file. Um, that process has been changed. Uh, Mark Edit 7, we find that most save operations take less than a second. Um, but on the file set that um, I'm using here, uh, that I'll use as an example to talk about um, loading and unloading of data, um, it's roughly about 300 megabytes. It takes about a second and a half um, to save the data. Uh, this is partly because the, the um, uh, save process was changed significantly. Uh, in fact, when the Market 7 first came out, saving could be done um, just about uh, as fast as a copy operation. Um, it's been slowed slightly, um, so this is why it takes one to two seconds um, on very large files because um, I added functionality to um, enforce Unicode normalization rules, um, something that is not important in most of the computational world, but very important from the library space. Um, and so it was added to address that. 
tasks can sometimes take a long time to run. So this was specifically true in Market at 6. It had to do with how tasks were architected. Uh, tasks in Market at 6 were very much like um, uh, a good analogy for a task in Market at 6 would be uh, like a screen recorder. Uh, essentially, what users didn't see is Market was opening invisibly windows that uh, you know, would fill them in and run them. And so. Um, for every task operation that was run, the application would load, save, um, and reload the file um, into uh, the application. Uh, it took a long time. It got a very large file. It took a really long time. So I had um, examples of tasks when uh, reworking for MarkEdit, re redeveloping in MarkEdit 7, um, of tasks in, in MarkEdit 6 that could be um, up to 1,000 uh, operations long. And will work across very large files could take hours, eight, nine, ten hours to process, a uh, significant amount of time. Um, those tasks uh, in Market at 7 can be run now in a matter of minutes. Uh, the sample that I was working with specifically um, that used to take almost nine to ten hours to process can be done in a little less than ten minutes um, on my development machines. Um, your mileage will vary slightly, but you'll see significant differences. And that has partly to do with the way tasks were re-architected to work and the, uh, the broker um, that's been put in place to evaluate both the tasks and the files that are being run against. Um, it makes determinations based on uh, what type of data you're working with to enable the application to choose the most likely most optimized and fastest process for handling task data. So on very large files, you'll actually find now that tasks can process very, very quickly. This is the one I'm going to spend more time on. Uh, the Mark Editor, has Mark Editor has trouble working with very large files, and that's for all versions. Um, and that's partly because there are strategies that I think that are necessary. And I think it also has something to do with thinking about um, how um, the batch editing works, particularly when you're dealing with very, very large files. Um, I think one of the the misconceptions um, or unrealistic expectations that a number of folks sometimes have um, is that within the application they should be able to load an entire file. Um, when that file is three, four, five, six, seven hundred megabytes, even sixty megabytes, um, if you think about trying to open a sixty megabyte um, Word document, um, Word will have some trouble. Um, if you try and open a text file that's sixty megabytes in Notepad see a lot of issues. Um, there are tools that can do this very quickly. In fact, Market has a hex editor that can open a, uh, a 500 to 500 gigabyte file almost instantaneously. The reason for the difference, um, and the difference in terms of how the editor works versus how something like a um, uh, the hex editor works, is that in some operations you can stream access to the file. So then what's actually happening is you're not actually opening the file. You're only seeing um, in the interface the data that's visible to the user. And the application streams the data to the, the user interactively. Uh, the challenge within the Mark Editor is that um, within the application, in order to do find and replace and global editing functions, that streaming functionality really can't be put in place. Um, users are looking to be able to interact with the data um, faster than that. In a streaming operation, every operation would have to scan the entire file as a stream moving back and forth um, within the, the file set. Uh, the way that it works now, data can either be worked on specifically within a page or at a file level, in which case streaming doesn't become an issue. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that more here in a minute. All right, so a couple reasons why big files are problematic. And so it has to do with rendering of data. And I'm going to show some examples of this. So um, in Windows, rendering rich data, and I'm going to make, make this very simple, Unicode data. Um, there are other kinds, but let's say Unicode data is very costly. Um, like I said, there's a reason why Office will choke on rendering very large files. And it's because data rendering is actually very, very expensive from a memory perspective. Um, the way I think of it is if you take um, a, a file that's uh, uh, you know, a couple of uh, megabytes in size, it's going to cost you probably two to three times that during the rendering process to, to actually see it. Um, I have some examples here where I'm going to show you um, what it looks like when you would provide MarkEdit very large page sets. 
um, in this set, um, they'll be rendering at a thousand, a one hundred, a thousand, and ten thousand records in a page. Um, within those pages, um, you have data sets that are roughly less than a megabyte, um, over a megabyte, uh, probably in the five to ten megabyte range, and then um, a file that's roughly about sixty megabytes. And, and in these, in these examples, um, you see uh, from a very real perspective how virtual memory gets consumed. Um, at the very top end, at 65 megabytes, it costs Windows almost um, 700, um, and in this example that I snapshot at, at the point of, of snapshot, it was roughly about 650 megabytes um, to render that 60 megabyte um, file. This is where we start getting into problems. Um, if you have an, a computer that's uh, smaller, um, uh, with less memory, you may move into swap space, uh, which is really expensive and slow. Um, it's just a, it's a challenge of rendering virtual data, and it's why a lot of uh, software, when they deal with very large data sets, they stream the operation. And there's a number of places in MarkEdit where data is streamed, especially in large lists. Um, the problem is, again, within the way that people want to work on the application within the Mark Editor, streaming data is very difficult. Um, it's also very difficult then to put into a database because there's a very costly operation that has to happen up front in very big files where the data has to be indexed. And to be honest, when you look at a large data file, sometimes that indexing operation, if this process is only going to be run once, um, is actually a lot more prohibitive um, than the actual time of working with the, the data um, in the file as a file. So in that case, we have to start thinking about strategies um, to deal with just the, the, the cost of rendering data in a graphical environment. Um, I'm also going to talk about here in Windows, although um, this is also true in, in the other operating systems, although uh, Windows is where I'm going to talk mostly because that's where the largest number of Marketed users are. Um, but in Windows, if you think about um, the rendering of data um, into a graphical environment, it's essentially the uh, operating system, the application reacting to events and messages. Um, a lot of people aren't familiar with this, but I, when I describe it, and this is a, a broad and probably oversimplified, um, it, it is an oversimplified um, illustration, but think of Windows as a big post office. So the operating system kernel is the mail person, and his job is to basically, or uh, their job is to basically um, pass those messages along to the individual applications. And loading a data file can generate thousands of these messages. Every time the data changes, every time a, data, a character is rendered, um, there are operations that flag um, how fonts are interacted with, how, um, whether there are update, upload code, uh, undo codes that are set. Um, just loading, uh, typing a character uh, can render, you know, 15 to 20 messages. So imagine loading um, a 60 megabyte file. There are just hundreds of thousands of messages that are generated. Um, in a rich data environment, these events require actions. So within MarkEdit, there's a queue that handles actions as they get processed. Some of them get passed directly to the operating system. Some the application has to handle. And so the larger the file, um, the more messages that get queued, and this is what happens when you see applications that freeze and aren't responding, the message queue is getting backed up. They're trying to process data, but they've run across an operation that's blocking the ability to handle messages. Um, within MarkEdit, I try, I'm trying to, I try to create a message queue that, that, that avoids as much blocking of data as possible, but file loading is one of those places where I do set up a blocking event, um, partly because uh, in the past, when making that an asynchronous process, people would work too quickly um, and start working on data that was still in process. So why are big files problematic? So here's an example. So I've snapshotted three instances of loading data into my system. First one is memory usage at 1,000 records per page. Um, Point of render, the application's consuming 19.4 megabytes. When the application's at idle, it, it uses roughly between 15 and 17 megabytes of memory space. Um, so that means that the 100 records file 
which broken down on the file set that I was working with turns out to be roughly about a thousand to um, roughly about a megabyte to a megabyte and a half, consumes roughly about two and a half megabytes to render, so about one to two. Uh, second example, we have a thousand records. That thousand records represents roughly about 10 megabytes. If we look at this as 16 megabytes as the base um, level for rendering for the application to work without rendering any data, that means it costs 100 megabytes in order to render that 10 megabyte file. It's a one to 10 difference. At 1,000 records per page, um, I snapshotted this at 616 megabytes, but the top perform the top level, um, and I didn't catch it, at render was 716 megabytes. That means that for those 10,000 records, which roughly worked out to being 65 megabytes, if we think about 16 being the baseline and 716 being the, the point in which we process, it was 700 megabytes in order to render that 65 megabyte file into space. Now when the rendering's done, it gives that memory back um, to the operating system. But in order to make that data available visually, 700 megabytes were consumed in order to render that data in a graphical environment. If you don't have that data, that, that virtual space available, and I do on this machine, this machine, I do have that virtual space available. If I didn't, it would get kicked into swap space. And that would just, that would start thrashing your, um, your, your uh, hard drive would start thrashing because it would be trying to move data around and it would slow the process down considerably. Um, so part of one of the challenges in working and developing MarkEdit is developing in a space um, where graphical data costs a significant amount of uh, a significant amount of memory to render, um, and in a space where users expect that data is rendered um, and available instantaneously within uh, the uh, the editor. All right, and so I'd mentioned this. So to allow, so it has to do with this. So to allow inline editing, the data can't be streamed. And so um, I've mentioned that, that some places do provide streaming within Mark Edit. The hex editor provides streaming. I imagine that tools like, um, uh, I'm not super familiar with them, probably Notepad Plus and a few things provide some streaming operations. Um, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, but the challenge is when you start having streaming operations, the, uh, the kinds of editing that you have start to uh, change. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to, to handle. And so it's much easier within MarkEdit to just deal with it on a page and a, a file level. And so in MarkEdit, there's paging. Paging is where the application um, will read a very large file and will create pages. That those would be uh, subsets of data, and these are virtual pages. They don't actually exist until they're edited. Um, and, and only pages for edited data um, are, are put in place until they're recombined back together. But pages then are set up. And some users tend to set very large pages because they want to load all their data in their system. So they want to load all the data in the Mark Editor. So um, where I see this most often are users who traditionally will work with data sets that are no, no larger than say 20,000 or 30,000 records. And what they'll do is they'll set a page to that top level set. So a 30,000 record um, file, well, a uh, page. In general, if they're working with record sets that are between one and uh, 5,000 records, they'll notice some performance hit because depending on what the record size looks like in their machine, but where they really see it is when they do get that large file of 10 to 20,000 records and try and render that into the application assuming um, that the numbers we've seen on the previous page here, um, that trying to render 10,000 records into the application consumed at the top shelf, almost 700 megabytes, it's not an exact match. In fact, it's probably more, um, but let's just double that for 20,000 records. That means you're consuming 104, uh, 1.4 gigabytes of virtual memory to render the data into a graphics environment so that it can be rendered all at once and visible to the user. That's a lot of data, that's a lot of memory, and it's really difficult um, for the operating system to handle. Um, and, and for most people, they will end up uh, having that probably available to them. So for users like myself, um, I tend to use very small pages. I like to use about 100 records per page. Um, 
for some users, they like a little bit more. So I actually recommend for practical experience that a range between 100 and 1,000 records probably tends to be the best. Um, you see a, a, a fewer performance hits. Um, I like small pages, but if um, you want something a little larger, 500 probably could be the sweet spot. Um, one last thing, and I think this might show up later, but I'll mention it here. So with paging, so one of the reasons why um, paging, uh, one of the, the, the consequences of paging is MarkEdit has to know how many pages are there. It has to scan the file. So again, for very large files, um, there's a hit of the application reading the entire file and then rendering it. Um, we're going to take a look at um, uh, some loading here in a minute. Um, so what that means is that, uh, let's say I have a file that's 300 megabytes, the very first thing that the operation has to do is it has to scan that file and find out how many pages are there, and then it renders the page. Um, that first process is, is going to take some time um, regardless, and so that's why there are ways to mitigate that within the application. Um, but again, I have a feeling that might be one of the reasons sometimes why people use very large page sets. Um, means the application creates a single page, um, so there's not that paging that happens. Um, but again, then you take a huge hit um, on the rendering of the actual data. Um, packed round jobs, so something that people don't think about. So for every edit mark edit makes, it creates a copy of the file you've opened. For every change, um, it creates a, a, a changed file, a last change file, and an original. That means at any time the application is managing um, three to four active files within the application in the background. File management doesn't incur a lot of overhead, um, but there are occasions where at the beginning of an action, the program must create a temp file to perform the request in action. And examples of that would be um, within the application here, places like um, the, uh, uh, the field counting um, or the material type reports. Those places kick off um, reports and so for very large files, um, you can see that will hesitate because the application has to save a copy of the file and then perform the operation and output the result. Um, in fact, um, I would say that one of the things that, uh, one of the places where this shouldn't be, shouldn't have been happening, but it was, um, was in the validator when MarkEdit added um, validation to um, the, the Mark Editor. Um, I included validator. One of the things that um, I had done was at the point of validation, the tool creates that temporary file and sets it aside um, for users to work with. In a very large, uh, when the pages are very large, that um, causes the application to hesitate. In very large files, just generally it causes the application to hesitate. Um, one of the things that uh, I've been interacting with is working to create um, a way to change the order. So here you can see that the file is prepping for validation. It's prepped, and now it's ready. So rather than hold up the display of the window, the application now provides more feedback um, so that users can see what's going on. And if you were to click the OK button before the file has been completely prepped, it just sets the application to wait for you. So you can actually click OK as soon as it comes up. The application will wait for the process to finish loading and then complete the operation as requested. But that's what's happening in the background. A lot of people don't realize it. The, the application ha does manage um, both uh, handling and cleaning and keeping track of a number of background processes uh, that, that make it easy for um, folks to undo things that have happened, and, um, take steps back, that kind of thing. So what are some strategies that allow you to get the most out of working with the Mark Editor? Well, the first one is I think you need to let Mark Edit help you do your work. So there are a number of uh, options that are set aside within um, the application that are designed um, specifically with the challenges that come up with large files in mind. Um, and if you work within the, um, the conceptual limits of the application, the, 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 the way that the application is thinking about how data renders, keeping in mind um, that the application has uh, uh, it's been designed um, around some of the, 
to, to hopefully minimize some of the, the limitations and challenges rendering large data sets in a graphical environment, um, you can get a lot more out of the editor and you'll find that the performance works much better. So here's the, the primary one. So I've set aside the primary um, uh, elements that are in the mark editor settings and we'll open them up and show you what they look like um, that actually probably are most useful in terms of allowing the editor to do its work. So inside the editor session, sessions, there's suggest preview mode on large files. I'm going to show you what that looks like, and I encourage that. Um, the use of the enhanced page management, um, which actually helps speed up uh, the loading of files 50 megabytes and lower, um, and records per page. And then I'll talk a little bit more about that. All right, so suggest preview mode on large files. So this is actually new to market at 7 was designed specifically because I think a lot of people have forgotten that preview mode exists. Um, when Mark Edit 6 was first, six or five, five or six, I forget which one, was first created, the only way to open a file that was large in the Mark Edit was in preview mode. And that was partly to address the large file issue um, that was causing issues in 4 where folks would want to work with very large files and they would find that they couldn't. So the application inter created a, a preview mode setting. So any file over a certain size, uh, in most cases it was uh, a megabyte, the file would be put into a preview mode. But that was problematic for other reasons. There were reasons why you'd want to work with the data in real time. And so there was a way for users to load things, load the whole file out of preview mode. And, um, again, you run into the issue where folks would load their data. They would have a file that was, you know, 30 to 40 megabytes, they hit the load, and then the program would, um, their operating system um, and their Apple and their, their Windows environment wouldn't have enough virtual memory to actually load the data, um, and you would start getting odd errors. So um, the way that Mark Edit 6 later and 7 was developed was to provide paging um, to facilitate the vast majority of the work that you might do, but also continue to include the preview mode for working with very, very large files. And in 7, because I think folks have forgotten that the preview mode exists, even though I, I will admit when I work with very large files, I use it all the time, the applications integrated the preview mode into the working of large files, specifically so that users will realize it's there and offer it as an option. And I encourage folks to use it. So because it's unrealistic, most likely, that you're going to scan 100 megabytes of data. And so that's kind of the, the, the marker. When this option is enabled and MarkEdit encounters a file 100 megabytes or larger, it will prompt you and ask if you want to open it in preview mode. And so let's take a look at what that means. So here I have MarkEdit. Um, I have in my space here, um, in the Mark Editor, there is 100 records per page. So we're going to read this and we're going to open 100 records per page. And inside that space, we're going to see how long it takes in 100,000 and 10,000, we'll do 5,000 records, um, to open a roughly 300 megabyte file. So 100 records per page, here's my uh, 300 megabyte file. Um, the very first thing that MarkEdit does is it recognizes it's larger than 100 records or 100 megabytes and it makes the offer to load this file into preview mode. Well, I'm going to skip that just to demonstrate what happens. So here we'll go ahead and say no. So now what MarkEdit does, it says, okay, you want to load it into paging mode. So it's going to tear the file, it's going to read the file and virtually create a directory of the file and kind of set aside um, number of pages. So you know, it took 12 seconds. It read that 300 megabyte file. It found that there were 1,042 pages at 100 records per page, and it rendered the first page. So now I have 100 records um, in this page. And if I want to, I can go to the next page. Now the nice thing is, inside the pages, it gives me the ability to move around, but I have the ability to edit the data in this page. I have the ability to edit the entire file set using the global editing tools. Um, and that's um, how that works. I think what happens a lot of times when people find that, that, that MarkEdit is having trouble measuring large data files is when folks do stuff like this. So this is 10,000 records per page. Um, now the application is going to load and it's going to take a significantly larger amount of time to do this. The time to process the data file to create um, number of pages goes way down. 
because the application is able to quickly determine how many pages are there. But now what happens is the application has to chew through that data um, and process it and render it. And this isn't something that happens strictly within the application because this is a negotiation between the application um, windows and the underlying components that render data that MarkEdit uses in terms of the Windows API to, to render the data. And this process now goes from taking um, 12 seconds, which is what it took to render this file, to break it down into many pages and render that one small page, um, to something that's going to take much longer, probably somewhere in the neighborhood um, of, if I had to guess, uh, probably in the 40 second range, but we'll find out here in a second. Yeah, so 50 seconds to render that file. There were only 12 pages. The creation of the pages happened very quickly, but the rendering of the page took a very long time. And one of the consequences of that then is the application has to respond to and readjust to the visual components every time you do an action on this page. So let's say I want to resize it. Well, now the application has to refresh itself. And so it's going to take it a minute for the application to do that. It has to pass that 65 megabytes back through the window render, Windows' rendering system and re-render that data. Um, so it didn't take 50 seconds again, but it took some time. So it starts to become um, problematic because you start seeing the, the application having to pause and handle all of the requests that happen as part of the Windows messaging queue and just the, the large amount of data that's been, been pulled apart. So what happens then if we allow the application to use the preview mode? So I'm not using the preview mode by default. I still like my pages. But let's let the application help us. So let's do this again. We'll open our large file. Except this time we're going to tell it yes. We do want to do um, that. That's it. The application's loaded. It took less than a second. And what it's done is it's read the data and loaded that 396 megabyte file by snapshotting a small snippet of it. Now this screen becomes locked. I can't edit in this screen. The admin functions are available to me. And let's be realistic. If I have a 300 megabyte file, it's probably not. Um, it's probably, I'm probably not going to go through the application and that file page by page. I'm probably going to want to use the, the larger global editing tools like the find all, the replace all, um, editing tools here where I can pass on um, add fields, build fields, those kind of things. Or maybe I want to run a task across that entire file set. So in this case, I have just minimized and removed the penalty that happens for loading data into the system by using the preview mode. And that will make it so that no matter how large of a file I have, it will never take longer than a second to load. Um, again, it works within the limitations then that you're going to be making your edits using the global editing tools rather than going to individual records and editing those records um, individually. Um, if you need to do that, then you would want to use the paging mode to work with that file set. The, the enhanced page management. So the enhanced page management um, has been designed within MarkEdit um, to speed up the processing of files that are uh, 50 megabytes and smaller. And the way that that's done, um, because the application does the, uh, the, the breaking down of record sets um, to create number of pages, it just reads all the data into memory. And so what that means is that if my file is smaller than 50 megabytes, um, operating the, the tool will load that data into 50 megabytes of memory, parse it into smaller bits, so it has a virtual directory and then load the, the individual page. Um, the performance increase is significant, um, although um, I'll tell you that uh, for some um, systems, although these would be ones that are um, uh, either very old or with very limited uh, memory um, uh, RAM uh, options, uh, you may see that, that it may make sense not to have that in enabled. Um, although I, I don't know if I've come across a system recent memory where where this option 
um, doesn't provide a significant um, improvement in rendering speed. And then the last one's records per page. I mentioned before that there are records per page, and so the mark editor sets the number of records it'll render into the option into the application. By default, it sets it at 100, um, which is why um, when I try to open that large file, there's an initial pause as the application um, figures out how many pages are in that almost 400 megabyte file. Um, but I recommend not exceeding a thousand. You can obviously put as many record sets as you want. And one of the things I will be doing is turning the red, the box red, if you enter um, elements over a thousand, mark at a seven, partly as a way to warn you that there could be a performance impact. Um, but that's kind of the way that, um, that, uh, um, that the application will handle. It won't not let you do it, but it's going to let you know. And so the below what we've been talking about, folks don't realize maybe that there are consequences to setting these really high record sets. Um, uh, and here are some examples that we just looked at in terms of where the 1,000 records were 15 megabytes, 10,000 records closer to 65. So what kind of recommendations do I have? Um, I work with a lot of big files, so um, I have some general recommendations for how to um, get the most out of the application. Uh, and if you're finding that record loading is taking time, um, I would look at your um, settings first uh, and then they don't, if they all look right, then um, follow up uh, and let me know what's going on. So obviously uh, my recommendations would be to enable the enhanced page management. Um, that should uh, enable the application to open file sets 50 megabytes and lower very quickly. Um, I'd enable the prompts for large files so that the application can give you um, feedback and let you know when it makes more sense to run data in the preview mode versus the paging mode. And I recommend, um, it, it can't recommend enough um, that when using the preview, when using the paging mode, pages should be set um, as low as you possibly can, uh, should be set low. I wouldn't set them lower than 100, um, mostly just because uh, it creates very large sets of pages um, for super large data sets. But I wouldn't go much higher than 1,000. Um, and that has nothing to do with the creation of and doing the paging of the data. It has everything to do with the cost of loading um, data into the editor. When you start getting very large data sets, you don't realize that one of these pages, you may have a, a data set where um, within your page, that first 1,000 records may, because they have each record maybe is you know, 8,000 uh, 80,000 bytes, that first thousand records may cost you, you know, almost 30 megabytes. Um, you just don't know. And so it's, I find it much easier to keep my page counts low um, because, again, with very large files, it's really unrealistic that I'm going to be jumping between pages to look at very specific records. Now, if, like I said, if you find something that seems slower than it should be, you should ask. Um, the application's designed to work with very large files. Um, uh, like I said, I, I work with very large files all the time, and there are times where I run across performance issues and I correct them. Um, but uh, I use the application for a very narrow scope of content because of the kind of work that I do generally in the Mark space now. Most of the work that I do um, with Mark Edit tends to be on the non-Mark and XML, uh, non-Mark and linked data side. Um, the actual uh, traditional mark editing, um, I do more in a, in, uh, when folks ask specifically um, for my help in terms of mitigating system migrations and whatnot. Um, so there are going to be times probably where you run across things where it seemed like a good idea at the time, but because of a large file, um, it, may, it doesn't make sense for the operation to work in the order that it's in. So the validator is a great example. Um, if you were to use um, mark edit right now, uh, and open that same file, uh, you would see a very different experience. Um, I'm giving you the experience from the development machine where the applications change the order of operations and provides feedback to the user um, in terms of what's happening. The field count and the material type is going to shift to that kind of a, a order as well. Um, it's going to shift the order of the background processes so that the application provides feedback right away. Um, it doesn't stall while the, the, those background processes happen. When you run across things, um, 
in the you followed the above recommendations, uh, let me know. It means that probably, possibly the order in which the background operations are happening needs to be adjusted. So generally, if you could follow these recommendations, users should find that MarketEdit can handle files um, at a pace where you should never be taking longer than seven to eight seconds um, to load a file below 100 megabytes. And in fact, I would say that generally it should be much faster than that. The place where you'll see, um, the, the, the place where you might get into the, to the, where you get closer to the higher numbers is if that file is like 99 megabytes and it doesn't kick into um, some of the other processes. Um, for larger files with the preview mode enabled, it should never take more than a second to a little over a second, as we've seen in the example up here. Um, and in that case, um, you'll find that uh, the operations happen very quickly. Um, I think that if you keep in mind the limitations that market has to work under, so the GUID environment, um, the large amount of text that gets rendered, dealing with multiple languages, multiple languages and font binding is very expensive. And, cataloging now with more Unicode data, we're mixing languages within the reference set. But if you set your options appropriately and you keep the limitations in mind, working with really large files, the only limitations you'll run into are really your hard drive and the virtual memory space that uh, you have available to you, but, but generally it's going to be your hard drive um, because of the number of um, uh, uh, files the application has to manage between operations. And in those cases, one of the ways that I deal with that is I have uh, an external drive that I'll plug into my computer. I'll go to the options. I'll tell Mark Edit that the temp file for the purposes of whatever I'm working on is actually on that temporary space. Uh, and I'll work with it that way. And that allows me then to work with file sets that are in the uh, tens to twenties to thirties of gigabytes. Uh, although I could work with them larger. Although at that size, sometimes I, I would probably sit down and script something. Um, but anyways, uh, the application has been designed with, with really large files um, in mind. Uh, and uh, we've tried and tried to make sure that the, uh, and especially with Mark, 7, Mark Edit 7, tried to um, start to bubble up um, places where the application will provide suggestions when large data files um, are encountered. Um, to help you try and uh, make the best use out of the application. Um, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, and hopefully if you do run across places where the application is, uh, is having um, issues um, working with specific operations and you think it shouldn't, uh, let me know. And I'll take a look at it and see um, why that, that's the case. It could just be, like I said, the same kind of thing that's happening with the the validator um, and the file count or the field counts and material type work that uh, the order of the operations just need to be shifted uh, and a little more feedback needs to be provided to the user so that you can see what's happening in the background it can be a little more transparent in that process um, but anyways hopefully that's useful and that uh, uh, it explains a little bit um, why with certain settings, the application may be very luggy and how to get the most out of the application uh, for folks who are experiencing that and want to be able to take advantage of the tool sets with larger data.